Welcome, pals, to another episode of the Pullbox Pals. I am one of your hosts, Matt, and as always, and usually, most of the time, we got Monk with me. <laughs> wow, that was uh, <laughs> that was one <laughs> heck of an intro. It was all yeah. over the place. I don't even know what word you said, like, hey, hello. Hey, hello, pals. My, my like, kind of goal for when I do the intros is just to scatter it as much as I can. Wow. Nothing, nothing consistent. Just <laughs> shoot the shot, you know? Yeah. So, because they always say, you know, like a, a comic book is like they should treat it as everybody's, it's their first comic, right? So, yeah. we don't want to be like those other podcasts out there that have, you know, they say the same thing so people can have a sense of stability knowing what they're going into. No, we, don't we just like stability. No way. <laughs> We're going to mix it up. We're doing our, our shout out spotlights, spotlight shout outs, whatever we call it at the beginning this week. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't. Hey. So, whoa. Uh, whoa. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. I was going to say that I haven't gotten to watch episode three of Ahsoka, but I did finally get to watch episodes uh, uh, one and two. Yeah. And it made me like instantly go and watch the Clone Wars. And for mm -hmm. the longest time, including last week, I was like, oh, Rebels is the best. Nothing can beat Rebels. And then, like, I just started watching the like beginning of Clone Wars, which is apparently bad. And I'm just like, oh, this this is definitely going to be better than Rebels. But uh, I think it's mostly because it's I it's characters I'm familiar with, so it's a lot of fun to see. Like, it's similar to like reading Star like the Jason Aaron uh, Star Wars comics because yeah. it's like, ooh, what are they up to in between these movies? You know, yeah, They're doing fun stuff. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, no. But th did you like Ahsoka? I did. Uh, I had a fun conversation with a guy at work about it, and he had never seen Rebels, and so it was interesting to see like somebody's perspective on this uh, who's never like seen it. Yeah. And so, like, I think I think Ahsoka would have. I think the only critique I can say is that it would have done well with having like a recap. But that episode was kind of supposed to be a recap between Rebels and like this. Yeah, so, like this that episode, those two episodes kind of existed so that you could kind of walk into it knowing where like everybody was at kind of, you know. Well, and I I think that oh. the end of episode two is like I nearly shot for thing. shot uh, the final episode of Rebels. Yes. Like the ending of it. Like it's I mean, it's it's as close to you as you can get from going from CGI to live action. But it's right I, I somebody somebody had posted something of them both like lined mm -hmm. up together and it was pretty much spot on so oh yeah they did a great job with that um i the only other critique that i have is ahsoka doing the puzzles from jedi fallen order at the beginning where she's mm -hmm. like sitting in that room and like turning that thing i just i just hate that as a concept i think it's like huh. if you look at Ra later raiders of the lost ark like, yeah that's a really good way to like show like you're going through like you're doing puzzles and you're going through a thing, you know, you're figuring out booby traps. I think just watching a, a lady with tentacles and who's orange turn a knob is kind of not that interesting, but that's, <laughs> I, I also hate, I also hate that in the video games. I, yeah, I always just go right to the tutorials. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out how you want me to force push this ball onto this roof. You know, yeah. like it's, I'm not going to, I'm not here for that. I want to jump around and smack things with a lightsaber. Well, I I would be on the opposite end, I think, oh. of, of both. Well, let me let me get let me say this. Okay. I, I really liked the the that scene of Ahsoka that you just mentioned that you you critiqued a little bit. I, I just really love that it was kind of also a tribute to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, but it could have uh, been a better tribute. It they could have done better, but like my I, hat in the background here. That's a that's a better tribute to Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> But I don't know. I really liked it just because, like, I don't know. It, it felt like a Star Wars opening to me. It felt like a Lucasfilm opening to me. Um, and uh, on the other, what was the other thing? The video games. Mm -hmm. So I will spend a good, like, half hour or so trying mm -hmm. to do it on my own. And then that's when I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to the websites and see who did a walkthrough of this because I can't figure it out. I'm not smart enough. <laughs> I keep a walk. I keep a walkthrough open in another tab and just like, I'm just like, I'm just got to keep going. I don't yeah. get time for this. I play on easy. I'm trying to get through this. Yeah, I just I'm not play on story mode. I'm there for the story right. of it. No, I want to see but... Anakin Skywalker do a back. Did you, uh, did you play the latest Jedi survivor? No, because it's $70. Yeah. Uh, my son and I got it and he, 
It was, I think, honestly, I think it was just bad release timing. I don't think they mm. should have released it right before uh, Tears of the Kingdom came out. Yeah. I mean, how much planning think, do they have for that? I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, those things are pretty announced pretty far in advance. But um, my son played through quite a bit of it. Like, he didn't finish it, but he was just like, I, I asked him about it the other day and he just said, Oh, it's, it's a pretty L of a game. Like it doesn't live up to the first one. Oh, and I was funny. like, Oh really? And so then I like went and read reviews and a lot of reviews are like saying the same thing about just mm. like, it wasn't as well done and wasn't as creative. I mean, I'll still probably eventually play it someday, like slowly mm -hmm. go through it. But I, yeah. I just, I don't have that time on my hands at the moment. Um, one, of, one of my favorite things about uh, Jedi Fallen Order, which is one of my favorite things about Star Wars, and I feel like they do this across all mediums in Star Wars, is that you'll be, you'll see like a stormtrooper and like somebody sneaking up on a stormtrooper, and then the stormtrooper's just kind of talking with the other person, and he's like. I don't really want to be here. I hope these Jedis don't show up. And then like you turn the corner and you shoot them. It's yeah. just like, it's like that's happens in rebels. It happens like in like a guy bumps his head in the original star Wars. Like it's, yeah. these, like they're kind of played for laughs. Not as much as like the, uh, the Roger Roger bots, which like yeah. I find pretty insufferable. Yeah, they're pretty um, they're pretty annoying, but I, I think they're supposed to be. Yeah, it's weird that the bad guys would go with the annoying bots, you know? Like mm -hmm. I would feel like well, maybe that's just a way to like hinder their like in, like have like a perpetual means of anger because yeah. that's that's how I get angry the most is just when I get like annoyed by stuff and then it just culminates into anger. So like well, if but I mean like that's that's why it's like funny to me though with the with those uh, what what are they called? It doesn't uh, matter. We know, everybody, everybody knows which <laughs> droids we're talking about, but it's just like they I'm are these the like they're these the war machine like soldiers. Yeah, like they're equipped with all this like Roger, really Roger. Cool stuff, but they have the dorkiest like voice that a droid could have for a battle droid. I think that's like very indicative of the um of the prequels, though. Uh, they're called O R G R, so they're just called Roger. Rod, they're just O R G R. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So I it's very indicative of the prequels where it's like there's a really cool, like solid thing here, but then like upon execution, you're like, oh. But again, that's that's yeah. how I the more I think about the prequels, I think there's a really good story, like a really complex, deep story there. But then I also think about I have a very distinct memory of leaving the clone uh, attack of the clones and just being like, I couldn't tell you for a million dollars what the story was of that movie. I can only yeah. tell you scenes and things that happened I, yeah. because the politics of it all is so over. Uh, you know, I would have been when did that come out? When did. I would have been a child. You 2000. Know? So uh, the first one came out in 99. So 2002. 2000, yeah, I would have been 12. So yeah. like listening to them talk about like blockades and politics and stuff would have been right over my head. But I would have been like Yoda looked dope bouncing around like a tennis ball, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Anywho. Uh, well, let's get it. Let's uh, let's get into what we're here for. Comics. What, what, and, what are uh, we here for? Remember, I think we're here for comics. Is that what are this... we here for comics? Yeah, I think so. I thought um, we were here for. I'm trying to think of another thing that a pool box could be, but I don't. I got nothing. I got nothing either. Yeah. Um, well, swinging I just, I wanted to start out just by saying how grateful I am to the comic book community. I was uh, so. Some other pals of ours were talking about like you know putting on different YouTube channels, like having it in the background. And I do that with a lot of like other comic book YouTube channels is I will put their stuff on the background while I'm doing like office work or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, one that I do a lot of is Mint Hunter Comics. And this is a guy out of, I think, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, but he just he he posted a video recently about like the five best and five worst things about like the like collecting comics. Mm. And one of his five best reasons was the comic community mm. just because like. And he, he talked about it, and I think we've talked about it before, too. But it's just like all conversations are on the table mm -hmm. when it comes to comic books. Um, and there's there's just like a respect in those conversations to where it doesn't get like political or like pointing fingers or you're right and I'm and, or like I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah. Um, and, 
you know, just thinking about that with like the other pals that we do have, the guys over at Comic Book Lair and Ross and Andy and just the creators that we've had on. It's just been like so fun to be a part mm -hmm. of like this community and just getting to know other like comic book nerds yeah. and just hearing hearing about stories that I haven't read before. And right. I always I always enjoy that. So, again, just thank you to the comic book community. Love. Love you guys and send send us any recommendations. I love a good recommendation. Yeah. Word. Maybe I'll make that a clip. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> so I was able to make it to my I, I just also want to say ditto. I don't want to yeah. sit here and try to up up your sentiment because I don't think I could. But um, yeah, I was able to make it to my shop today. Always a lovely treat. And I was kind of expecting a light week and it wasn't so much a light week. But I'm oh. like, I didn't get anything like because I was like, you know, uh, I, I didn't get anything because I was like, well, I just I should get this because I want to just add to the pile or whatever. Like everything that I got off the shelf, like I was excited about pulling mm. off, you know. Yeah. Um, so to start, uh, speaking of our good buddy uh, the, over at the comic book lair. Also, I just want to say I was thinking about this earlier before we jumped on the uh, episode that I am every time I do the intro, I am terrified that I'm going to say, hey, everybody, welcome to the comic book uh, lair. That I'm just going to start <laughs> doing their intro and just completely forget ours. But uh, I know they're stoked on this. The Hunger and the Dusk, number two. And I am oh, loving man. these covers. This is Those just covers are super rad. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm getting this series. I'm not a super fan of the original ones. But yeah, I'm I'm excited to see where this one goes. That's there's a wolves inside of it. Like Dave Filoni himself wrote it. <laughs> um <laughs> that was uh if you didn't uh, know dave dave filoni <laughs> likes wolves yeah he <laughs> sure does that oh boy uh just yeah now that you know that you'll see him everywhere they're not that heavy in mandal oh i guess john john uh favreau does mandalorian um yeah. but uh so i i saw this on the shelf and originally i thought this was a black caravan comic which i haven't seen oh. like anything of in a long time but it wasn't. It was uh, Blood Moon, which has been putting out some really dope stuff, along with uh, Panico Press. And it's Gunbreed Law of the Undead. Ooh. And it's kind of like a bigger comic. Ironically, um, okay, so like it's bigger than The Hunger in the Dusk by just a little bit. And then my next comic that I'm getting is Pink Elephant, and it's a small oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, uh, yeah, comics come in all shapes and sizes, quite literally. But uh, I, I have no idea what it's about. I just opened it for the first time and realized that it's in black and white, and there's a guy with two heads and and the gun. So it kind of looks like it. Honestly, looks very reminiscent of uh, Midnight Western Theater, but a little bit more like dark and uh, like it's got more grit into it. And also, somebody's yelling oh. "wagon" in the corner here, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> wagon, <laughs> <A> wagon. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I just teased it. But uh, uh, Pink Elephant, Sumerian does these uh, like really trippy small books, um, and the art inside was just like very like I don't know, like I would feel like this would be like a comic in like the '80s or something like that. Like I'm yeah. thinking of this dude's face over here just looks very like. 80s captain america or something like 80s iron man you know yeah, yeah. no that that's that's some good art there that is some good I, art there. I like so i have a i have a guy who's been coming into the shop and uh I, I i may have misheard him but i think that his dad used to be an artist for like not the original ninja turtles run but like whatever came after the original run mm -hmm. um and so he's like super into like the like the mid 80s to like early 90s just black and white comics mm -hmm. but like and some, some very reminiscent. Yeah. and that like and that's not black and white but it is very mm -hmm. reminiscent of that that style yeah. right um but yeah but i think this next one you picked up let's see local oh man God. the uh I, I guess i'm really excited to actually talk about this cover yeah um, it's pretty sweet do you know what this cover is a tribute to space no um it's no, uh no it's idea. a tribute to uh death mate i don't know what that is so death mate is it's kind of an iconic um series that came out um what in like 93 i believe okay uh here i'm gonna i'm gonna do the share screen thing oh boy this is 
Matt's uh, first time doing this on the go. air. Let's see what happens. Oh Let's boy, see. here we go. It's coming. Uh, Maybe. I'm just gonna get to the covers here. Okay. Oops. Um, yeah, I'd never heard of this, so I'm very excited to figure out uh, what this is. Hmm. Once I'm not getting a good picture here. Um, okay, you can just explain well, it. Gosh dang it! <laughs> Please explain it. Well, it's it's like identical to the Deathmate covers, and mm -hmm. uh, so Deathmate was a crossover between Valiant and Image. Oh, okay. And uh, there was a lot of hype around it. Gotcha. And uh, because it was a crossover between characters from two different comic book universes, and but it was just met with like delays and publishing like uh and they they can be read in any order apparently so there's like a prologue and an epilogue and then the four issues in between so there's the prologue and then the red yellow blue and black issues and then the epilogue and i think that the four in between can be read in any order and then they're not not they're not numbered so that's like death mate prologue death mate red death mate mm. yellow um that's really but cool. it it, it was apparently a pretty like controversial comic that came out just because of the publishing stuff, mm -hmm. but also it just didn't really like land with audiences. Interesting. And it's supposedly the, you know, the, what's the saying for getting like, it was like the chopping block for Valiant mm -hmm. comic. Interesting. Yeah. Like they, they say that it was because of this. Yeah, it was because of this series that like Valiant went under. Oh, that's sad. But, but they're a good thing to have in your uh, collection, and yeah. uh, I do, I do have them. Oh, there you go. That's dope. Uh, but they, they are, they are for sale down at the shop. So oh, wow, I would, I would swing by. Yeah, and if anybody wanted to buy that whole series, I would definitely make a deal on it. So there you go. You're gonna get the uh, pool box pals discount. Just yeah. make sure that you use Poolbox Powell's at uh, the checkout. Just enter yeah. the code. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so yeah, I'm excited. I have no idea what that's about, like the story of it, like in and of itself. But uh, I'm excited to dive into it and, and see what's going on. Yeah. And um, like local, local man has just been so good so mm -hmm. far. Uh, I have zero complaints about that series. It's just it's really fun. It's it's like kind of a pseudo crossover. Like it's taking some new characters, but putting them in a world that already exists. Okay. And so like, do these characters exist before? I didn't, I don't think I knew that. Not, not that I'm aware of, but oh, like okay. they've, they've made mentions to like villains that you would see in spawn. And right. I think they've That's even right. ref they've referenced like Wildcats and gen 13. Gotcha. Uh, just a bunch of like kind of more old school, uh, like early image comics is a lot of what gets mentioned throughout local man. And uh, That's I dope. just really, I just really like how it's been written with like respect to early image. Mm hmm. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do two comics next, which are both from IDW and they're kind of, they're of the same vein. They're both IDW endless summer comics. Uh, my shop had these two plus uh, a third one, which I'm trying to remember, which I think was Street Fighter or something like that. But uh, I got Sonic the Hedgehog and Endless Summer. These are both one shots, um, which I always love a good Sonic story. And then also uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Endless Summer. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cowabunga. Or... Cowabunga, dudes. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm excited to read this as uh, as the summer comes to an end. Uh, real quick, can you enable the screen share thing? Is that on your end that you have to do that? Uh, I don't know. I just said, I just, I don't know. That, we'll, we, we'll try I, this at some other time. We'll try it at another time. But yeah, yeah. just, got, just Google death mate and look at the covers. They're like, uh, they're identical to this new local man. Gotcha. Um, let me yeah. just, I can pull them up at some point right now, but I do have one more that I picked up this week. It Ooh. is quicksand uh, number two, which I got right over my shoulder here. Yep. And we are going to be talking about in a couple minutes. So yeah, hang on tight. Stay everybody. tuned. <laughs> well, cool. hey, bud, that's all I got. What, how about yourself? What did you get? Yeah. Well, I had a pretty light week, so we already know I got local man. Uh, but right. I believe this is a new arc starting. Uh, I don't know if it, it might be a finale of Bones of the Gods issue number five. Okay. Came out. 
Uh, then I got uh, issue number six of Hunt, Kill, Repeat. Saw that on the shelf as well. Is, uh, and then the other one. This one is the first release, I believe, from this new publisher, uh, Distillery. And Ooh. it's called, is it called? Yeah, it's called The Devil's Cut. And it's an anthology. So it's, oh. a, it's, a, it's pretty big. You know, yeah, you, just, you, you had a big comic with you. I have, you know, here's, here's uh, Hunt, Kill, Repeat for reference. Wow. That is huge. Um, yeah, it's 88 pages, and I think that it has multiple writers in it. So, yeah, yeah. there's uh, we got Tinian's in here. Oh, Stephanie wow. Phillips is in here. Scott Snyder's in here. <laughs> Ram V is in here. Jeez. Uh, yeah, there's Ram V. There's quite a, oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Ha, good job and, on this company. And like the art's all different throughout as well. Oh, so, my goodness. Well, yeah. I think I, I think I might have saw that at my shop. Uh, if it's there when I go next week, I'm definitely going to have to pick that up because that's, it would just be great to have the first comic from a publisher. You know, yeah. I don't think I have anything like that. I might, I might be wrong that it's the first one, but, uh, I, I want to believe, it. I want to believe that I'm right. It's, it's called the devil's cut. I got it. I'll look into it. Um, but yeah, that that's all I got this week. Just that one. No, I got, I got four comics. Oh, wait. Wait, I'm confused. Go run that back by me again. So that this this is that that was the end of my polls. Yeah, I got that. Cut. Yeah, I'm confused as I I just can't remember the other comics you got. I oh, just forgot them real quick. So uh, uh, Bones local of the man, God, Bones local of the Gods, man. and uh, hunt, hunt, kill, repeat. That's it. it. Okay. Wow. That's it. Wow. Yeah. So you and I switched roles this week because normally <laughs> uh, normally I get the smaller one and then. Uh, yeah, so that's fun. But, uh, which yeah. one, which one do you want to dive into first? Why don't we, why, since you already mentioned it, why don't we get into quicksand first? I agree. Let's do quicksand. You, so you got it. You got it fresh on the mind. Cause you, you read, I, it I read this up and starting this episode. Yeah. I read this about two hours ago. <laughs> um, yeah. And it was listed as new on my shop. So I guess for some reason we just got it late this week, but, uh, yeah, I mean that is what it is. Today, um, it, today was actually the release date for it. I just somehow got mine early, and sometimes that happens with Scout. I'll get it the week before. Um, I don't really know why, because this happened with something else we both got from Scout like yeah. fairly recently. I I, I, I want to be bold enough to say that it was also a Jonathan Hendricks joint. It is. I mean the uh, the other thing that we got early. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. I can't remember what it what it was, but. Um, either way, uh, what'd you think? Uh, I really liked it. Um, there was a little bit of time in between the first and second issues. I don't think that they were a month apart. I think they're closer to two months, months apart. Yeah. Um, but when, as I was reading through it, like when I first started, I was like, okay, what happened in issue one? But then it all just kind of came back to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know that it, this issue is just another, it seemed like another stepping stone, like another building like still building out the world and the characters. Um, and I don't know, the, the art is fantastic for it. Uh, who does the art? Uh, let's see. Got the name. De right Deborah. On. It's Deborah oh, yeah. Lanci Lancianis. Yep. Uh, which she's she's worked with Hedrick quite a bit. Um, and she she does. She just kills it with with her art. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the story, too, is just like, I would also say this one was a little bit less intense than issue one. Um, yeah, I mean, which is ironic because this one, like they're fighting technically like through the whole thing, whereas in issue number one, uh, they're kind of setting up everything. And so you meet a lot of like high intense characters, you yeah. know, because it's it's military based. So there's just a lot of like big personalities of being like, look how good I can shoot this gun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so like the little little pub sum for this is a little a little over a year has passed since monsters crawled out of the sands near the Egyptian pyramids. Now the nearby military base echoes with sound of alarm as the creatures return to the surface once again. Stephanie Noon, wife of the lost Canary One crew leader, is on ground and ready to take action. But this time the monsters have brought something unexpected with them. Um, that's something unexpected, I think. Uh, I would encourage people to pick this up just to see what that is. But it, it also, it seemed like it was leading towards what you would expect in the unexpected, 
but then mm-hmm. it actually it it didn't. It was something slightly different. Um, right. Yeah. And I, I like really enjoyed that because it it did help build the intensity of the of the scenario that they are in. And so mm-hmm. like so from what we know from issue one is Stephanie Noon's husband was on this team that went down into the hole where these monsters came out of. And then his team was not heard from uh, for for a little over a year. Mm. And uh, I don't there's not a whole lot of background yet on Stephanie and like. Mm you know, what her credentials are, but she essentially shows up and she's taking over the base. Like she's the head honcho now, right. um, which all of the people, the military people there had an issue with, but uh, they had, you know, they had to pull rank. Right. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a really good series. I love what Hedrick does. Hedrick is just such a great writer. Andy's a pal of ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I really encourage people, uh, you know, pick up quicksand or pick up anything that Hedrick's written that you haven't read because his stories really, really grip you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. And he's, and when we had him on, we talked about it, but he's just very diverse in his writing. Yeah. Um, you, you showed last week or two weeks ago, his, uh, uh Caffeinated Caffeinated. yep. Like that's still probably like, that's, that's, I think that's one of my all time favorite one shots that mm-hmm. I've ever read. Yeah, it's definitely up there. It's yeah. I mean, I definitely he's very um, how, how would you say that Div- diverse writer, very equipped, just knowing how to to get these things apart. And I feel like he always works really well with the artist of yeah. just kind of working together with them to like even just the intensity of which they or the intensity, the volume at which the story is told. If that makes yeah. sense, I mm-hmm. think it uh, is also kind of relayed through the writing as well as like the art. Um, so yeah, I mean, just it's it's a it's one of those comics that feels like a comic, you know? Yeah. Where it's like I'm picking it up. There's a weird space aliens coming out from the earth, and maybe they're not space aliens. They're giant like scorpions. Like, yeah, it's a, uh, it's I like what's not to enjoy about that, you know? Yeah. Just simple premise. It's I mean not simple like in a bad way, but just like again another like good like you can explain it in an elevator. Just like here's the premise, you know? Yeah. Giant um, stuff's coming out of it. But yeah, so this issue was really fun. It started off, you know, with with some bangs because issue one ended with the alarms and the monsters were coming back up out of the hole. And this issue picks up with them shooting. And there was like the general guy who was just like, shoot, I'm like, out of ammo. And he like throws his gun at it. And then he just yeah. pulls his knife. He's like, got to go old school on this thing. <laughs> yeah. And then it, my favorite part about that is it smacks the knife out of his hand. And so it's like it too is ready to like go toe to toe. Because yeah. like it has, if you see the creatures, they have like, you know, giant nails. So they could just, he could have just impaled him. He didn't yeah. need to take his time smacking the thing out of his hand. And uh, I think, I thought that was cool that the bug was kind of like, Okay, old man. You want to dance? <laughs> you, yeah, you want to dance? I'll dance. I'll dance with the devil in the pale moonlight, whatever that means. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go pick that up if you haven't yet. Uh, I think the next one is, is going to come out in about a month from now. So, getting on track nice. there. Um, but yeah, I love Quicksand. I love Jonathan Hedrick. Yep. Same. And I love you. Love you. Uh, too, you're- man. Oh, thank you. I thought I was going to get you in the middle of a water and then I was going to be like, ah, you don't no. love me. You but... got me in the middle of a frame lager. <laughs> oh, wow. I love a lager. Uh, you know what also I loved? Uh, what else I loved? You know what else I loved? Matt, what is that? What, what did you, know you love? What? I'm going to tell you. Uh, Who do you love? Big game. Big game. Yeah. Big game. Uh, <laughs> We're singing songs about everything. <laughs> Oh, big shoot. game. Uh, yeah, I, I I really love this cover. Um, I just want to say, like, seeing Nemesis reflect, like, in, yeah. like, the pool of blood, uh, not only does a very good job at, like, um, oh, wow, my buddy Anthony, I love you, too. You better become <laughs> a Barnstock. That's a, a side thing. But um, <laughs> Barnstock is this show I host in my barn. But um, anyways, I digress. Uh, this, I, I am, this, this issue caught me super off guard. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, what else can you say then? I just didn't see it coming. Like I was, I was expecting, I mean, we, we talk a lot about like, 
some of our favorite covers can tell you a snippet of what's inside and like mm-hmm. this cover does a great job of that but like mm-hmm. actually getting to the point that the cover is representing you're just like my goodness like it right. yeah it, it was a bit like shocking and it just brought into questions like what what was the points of the ambassadors right well, let's <laughs> let's let's set this up a little bit so uh the big game is kind of like a it's mark miller's excuse to put the crossover event of a summer on a comic yeah uh, because he and again like it's deserved because over the past year or so he's just been putting out a lot of comics that have, are new as mixed with um a lot his of his older, older stuff, stuff. Yeah. right and so this is kind of the culmination of all of that stuff and um one of the most recent the two most recent teams are have been nightclub and the ambassadors and i don't want to spoil this uh issue because i mm-hmm. think you know it's it's really important to go in i think it's i think uh, the fun of this issue is seeing what happens yeah but boy you're 100 right where you're just like i i don't know where this is going there's three more issues that i thought that that these things were more important than these things you know like yeah but again, I think, you know, that's just I got to give the devil his due and just say that Mark Miller is like, uh, you know, he's he's a legend for a reason. Yeah. You know, no, absolutely. Um, yeah. It, it when I closed it, I was like mad. Like, I was just like, come on, like, give 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 us some like more exciting, like happy stuff. But it's just. Oh, it was I was. Just, it I was, was just, just like wanting the next issue. That's why I was frustrated because I'm just like, ah, you're going to make me wait like a whole month to see how this <laughs> gets oh, yeah. resolved. And I, I would, I would say that was an aspect to my, my madness about it as well. It was just like, gosh, man. Cause it, it does just kind of leave you on this huge cliffhanger. Like, Oh yeah. Like we, we know where nemesis is going next mm-hmm. and it's just like, okay, how's, how is this going to play out? Uh, and, I would imagine a lot, uh, a lot worse than it did for the people that you know for how it turned out for the prior people we'll yeah. say like and, honest, and honestly like i i don't i haven't read much of nemesis i've picked up an issue or two nothing. uh like i don't know he just he wasn't anybody that was like alluring to me but he is now mm-hmm. and i like I, i'm i i do want to try and dive into some of the earlier nemesis stuff i don't even know how long nemesis has been around but i assume oh. he's he's had quite a few <laughs> issues though I'll look at I'll look into it, but um I was I'm curious to see I want to go back and read Nemesis because I want to see if this is his personality then still or if he's kind of different now and like we're not picking up on something because we don't know Nemesis. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. yeah. Um so, but yeah, this one man. So basically what's going on is uh back in nineteen eighty-six. Uh, the villains of the earth were able to rid the world of its superheroes. And right. now, now it seems like superheroes are starting to make a sneaky comeback, but the villains are kind of already a step ahead of them. Right. Yeah. They're kind of like, yeah, one, I was just going to say like one, one step ahead of them, knowing where they're going to be and kind of cutting them off at the past before they kind of get too noter, like become before they become an actual threat. Yeah. And I also like, I love like the reality that, that sets into it as well. Of like, I don't think this is much of a spoiler, but just like when hit girl shows up in this one, Mm -hmm. like she's just going, it's Wednesday. She's going to the comic book shop to pick up her comics. Yeah. And you know, and then there's a guy in her backseat saying, just keep driving. (laughs) Yeah. You know? And it's just, I I'm excited to see how kick ass and hit girl come into play into this series. Uh, just because I, I, I don't know for me, like those characters are kind of, uh, like Mark Miller's like Superman and Batman. Like there is, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, he, they might not be, but in my mind, they're the most popular characters that he's written or at least most renowned. I mean, yeah, probably definitely up there for sure. Um, uh, so it looks like nemesis is only a four issue arc um and Interesting. yeah just came out in 2010 and then this year they did nemesis reloaded which is yeah. uh, where i would imagine a lot of where we're seeing him now but i mean if it's only four issues and then i would imagine like nemesis reloaded is probably pretty similar um yeah that's I'm, a nice weekend right there <coughs> 
Yeah. Bless you. Uh, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whichever one that was. Um, but yeah, I've, I enjoy it. I'm looking forward to seeing where it, I'm, I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes, you know, like I'm super in on this. Yeah. And like, I'm, I'm more in on it than I thought I would be. Yes. Yeah, same. Cause like I was, I was a little wary going into issue one and like issue one honestly didn't like fix that weariness for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but this issue definitely just like set it in and I'm, I'm very much on board to read through this, this arc. Yeah. And it's like, it's, you know, on the cover, it just, it says pretty, which I like, and like, this is something they should do is like two out of five down here. It says, yeah. um, Cause yeah, and I see that and I'm just like, oh, only three more. Like, there's so much I want like resolved in this, and I don't think that I'm gonna see it within like three issues, you know. But, but then, but, but then, where's Miller World gonna go from there? Yeah, and I think that that's interesting because especially like with like big game, big game doesn't at the moment doesn't mean anything, you know. Like, yeah, it's not like a nemesis or a kickass or something like or the ambassadors that like is named after the team. It's just kind of like. I always just kind of read it as Mark Miller's big game, you know, like kind of what yeah. he's been working towards. Um, so I think he might just come, you know, uh, big game volume two and just like mix, maybe not even these same characters, maybe other ones, you know, like who knows? I think I really yeah. appreciate that they're doing this kind of crossover thing in this kind of a similar like vein of like a civil war or secret invasion or something like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, but yeah, I'm excited about that uh, coming out. Uh, so the next issue comes out on the 20th of next month. The cover for it has our some of our uh, some of our favorites from uh, Night Nightclub. Oh yeah, yeah. They're on I mean, there. yeah. I guess that would make sense that they they haven't really shown up in this at all, have they? I don't think like, uh, just they've mentioned. they've they've just been mentioned so yeah. far. Um, but yeah, I mean, it also just having wrapped up uh, Nightclub too, uh, just. I don't know. I think that's another thing that's put me into this game is mm. like, mm -hmm. I know night nightclubs coming. I really enjoyed that first arc hoping there's going to be a second. Right. Um, I guess we'll find out because here's what I would say is I think that nightclub ended in a way that implied a second arc uh, more so than the ambassadors did. Um, but I wonder if this is going to be kind of similar to like a Marvel crossover where like an arc ends for a character. They go off and do like they go to space and fight with the Avengers for a little bit and then they come back and they do Daredevil stuff or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I, I wonder if we'll because I'm very curious because of the ending of Nightclub where they're going. I'm very interested to see if that is going to play into this or if it'll just kind of play a background thing, you know? Yeah. Like the, this could be the sequel to the first arc of nightclub. Right. But um, I would love for nightclub to be, continue to be a one ninety nine series that's on the shelves, you know, that's, that's the best thing about it. Yeah. Not, not um, to take away from what's inside those pages, but like the, the price mark on that is just, yeah. it's, it's too hard to say no to, but this is four ninety nine, So Mark Miller's making his money back. <laughs> so, um, which is fine. Yeah. So I'm excited for that. So it does look like issue three is going to have some, uh, some nightclub action in it and uh, i'm excited to see that because i'm curious how given how nemesis uh fought with uh the the ambassadors mm -hmm. i'm curious to see how he takes on nightclub yeah for sure um yeah so i don't i don't really have anything else i want to say let's uh you want to you want to keep on keep Keep on rolling, baby. Keep on rolling, man. What do you got next? Well, how about you go? Because I only have two more that I want to talk about. So okay. I feel like you probably have more than than moi. Yeah. Um, where should I go here? Uh, what did you? Oh, you put Tenement up in the title, so I'll go. I'll go with that. Yeah. So Tenement issue three, I believe. Um, yeah. Yeah, issue three. So that came out. I'm just. I'm really digging this because it is. It, it's Bone Orchard Mythos, and it just very much carries the vibes of Gideon Falls. Um, and I guess quite literally with this issue, we are going down into the depths of this story. Mm. Like that, that's like the story really is, because what's going on is there's these seven tenants of the same building. 
first issue introduced this guy who ended up, he was like the oldest guy that a lot of the other tenants seem to have problems with, or just like lore and stories about him because he was so much older and some kind of take him as like a grumpy old man, but he like ends up dying at the end of the first issue, even though he was the one telling that story. Mm. And then uh, the second issue finds these seven tenants uh, kind of together and like trapped within their building and now they are like being led down a path uh that's got seven floors in it and uh they've already come across some like adversaries they were spooky and i don't know it just uh jeff jeff is just doing a really good job of what he does well of just leaving you with questions and wanting more mm -hmm. so um yeah so I've said it before about tenant or tenement, but uh, it is just what I expected Bone Orchard Mythos to be overall. Uh, yeah. it's, it's hands down my favorite that release out of that mythos. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody, I think maybe Ross might be reading it too. Yeah, not 100%. I was going to ask how many issues is it going to be? Oh, uh, probably five. And do you have any like idea that? what's next in the Bone Mythos Ortro Morsos Marf of Miss? uh i i don't well uh, there's gonna, there's gonna be fun. there's gonna be six issues um and bone orchard mythos six issues okay so yeah so some, i mean so there's a trade paperback called starseed coming out next um, interesting star that i like that i that i've been doesn't have a release date yet but the cover for it looks pretty cool nice i've been uh looking at fireflies firefly what's that uh the last Jeff Lemire thing he did that was kind of just in his old stuff, like uh, oh, fish, um, fish flies, fish flies. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I've been looking at that on my to read pile and I want to read it, but it's thick, but I would imagine that there's probably a lot of empty space in between words. Did you get the free comic book day of fish flies? Okay. Mm -hmm. So like that, the free comic book day issue is like the first half of issue one. And so like I when I when I picked up issue one, I was able to be like, oh, I already read this and just like kind of flip through to like, you know, past the climax and into the, like the detail of what's coming next. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, issue two of that comes out next month. Um, and it is just, you know, Jeff Lemire is always at his best when he's doing it on his own. Mm hmm. And yeah. I just I don't I don't know of a series that Jeff Lemire has done the entire thing that I don't like. Yeah, me neither. So, so good on him for just being again another legend in the of the game. And I mean, he's like a he's like a, a newer legend. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm so excited to see like the he's weird... been he's been he's been around for a while, but like I, mm. I would say like his name has been put up there like over the last couple of years. Yeah, for sure. So. I'm very excited to see what he gets into over the like like what when he's old, what he's putting out then. I think is yeah. going to be a very trippy and weird and emotional. Is he going to have a? Is he going to have a Jeff Lemire presents? <laughs> like uh, Frank, Frank Miller presents. Who knows? Maybe he'll get to that level. Like yeah. it's a like it's a movie production. Yeah. Um, but uh, something I would love to see as a movie, and I mean that genuinely. Uh, let's, let's hear about it. Is <clears throat> Crimson Flower? Oh yeah, you okay. you posted about this recently. I did. I posted about it uh, just last night. And um, I so I got this in if if you're if you're a fan of the show, I'm sure you're aware that uh, at the beginning of the year, my comic book shop did a uh, deal where you could buy a short box for thirty dollars and fill it with as many comics as you could. And um, I'm thankful that the last couple of weeks, my pile has been short because I've been able to kind of dig through that and like kind of see some stuff in there. Cause there's just a lot of stuff I threw in there just because it was complete arcs, you know, like, yeah. And then I just kind of forgot that I have it. I'm a pretty sure I have like multiple copies of the same, like multiple arcs like that. Mm -hmm. I just have forgotten about. Um, Cause I'm not good at using that app th that I bought and, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Oh, well that's on me. But um, yeah, so I I got into Crimson Flower. It was a it's a four issue uh, miniseries from Dark Horse Comics. It's from Matt Kent, um, uh, Lineski, and Carpeti are the other names on the covers. I don't know what they are, but I just want to say that it is my banger of the week. 
Ooh. Yeah. I absolutely love this comic. This comic, the way that this story is told, it was told unlike any other comic that I had ever read. Huh. It it was just brilliant storytelling. The, um so the premise is that there's this young girl, and I don't know if she's ever named. Um, I can't remember it because she it's pretty much just kind of very much from her perspective. Uh, she the, it opens with her being saying, I remember my father's study distinct uh, like distinctly. And um, then she talks about how she would sneak in there and read um, old folk tales. And oh. so she uh, the book opens with her sitting in like a chair reading one of these books and then she sees her father gets murdered and then the murderer walks out of the room and then it kind of smash cuts to her as an adult and she works for this pharmaceutical company um, because she is schizophrenic and she takes this medicine and it helps like level her out oh, um, okay but she, she uh she's kind of using that job as a cover to go and kind of track down her father's killer um so she's kind of like going into like medical facilities trying to get like records and and yada 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 um and i i don't want to spoil too much of it because the like the pull back and reveal of it is so slow and it goes over the whole four issues and it's it's a very slow drip feed of a of a twist um but man it she she essentially comes across a lot of what could be assassins and just kind of takes them all out. And I really don't want to say more because I don't want to spoil the comic. But like, just do yourself a favor and read this comic because it is like, again, to me, it's just a it's it's like a work. It's like a oh, how do you say this? It's like a class of storytelling it's it's like required reading it's like you should read this to see how comic books can tell a story and just mm. how well the art can blend into it and yeah the and again it's a comic that deals with uh, schizophrenia and mental illness and whenever those kind of like uh you know trigger or whenever they kind of get uh, overwhelmed everything kind of begins to twist and be kind of becomes dreamy and mm. i just I'd love that. It's it's beautiful. Everything is just so just well put together for this comic. Like it's 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 a master class in comic writing. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Like it's it's just phenomenal storytelling. I yeah, you need I'm, to looking cut, at, I'm looking at the preview of it right now. You need to cut me off because I'm just gonna sit here and just continually no, no, keep, say keep going. it's such a good comic. Because yeah, it's just I, I I haven't read a comic like this in years. <laughs> <laughs> so no, like I, uh, yeah, I might, like, I might see if, if I can find that in some format. To, I, to I really through. would like you to, because, uh, the, like, the, I would love to talk to you about the twist, but I don't want to, you don't want to spoil it. Right. Yeah. Um, so please, <laughs> please please go comic. please go get it please i'm begging you read it <laughs> please, yeah please read it um but yeah so that's that's it for me i mean i got one more that i'll i'll spotlight shout out but before we get to my spotlight shout out do you want to shout out a spotlight uh yeah i, I do <laughs> i would love to do that um, i confuse you with all those spotlights and shout outs and shout outs and spotlights yeah so i was kind of excited because like we've already established I was gone for a few weeks. And so when I came back, I had a bunch to read. And one of the first things I picked up was ribbon queen and ribbon queen two came mm. out last week. And just, just as thrilling as the first one, honestly, That's I got a little bit more like detail on like the mysterious woman, uh, f found out who she actually is. Um, That's cool. and, but it, it it's just it's a great series. It deals with so many just issues that we see on the day to day, whether it be political or racial or mm. just within like the police department. Like there's just so many things being covered in this story hmm. uh, that um, and it and then on top of it, it is just a nice like kind of de detective horror thriller. 
mm. I think is how I would probably that's probably how it would be described. And the the art is fantastic in it. Like just I mean the detail the detail of what you know we now know are the ribbons for the ribbon queen, which is just flesh coming off of people <laughs> in, in ribbons, which is disgusting. And I can't imagine how horrible that must feel. That's what um, that's my biggest fear is being skinned alive. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah so yeah that's that's um, up there and i mean deep sea anything just but, flopping in the middle of the ocean just being like oh, i'm gonna drown yeah but just like the artwork that is done in the moments of the riven queen showing up like the artwork on that is just so good like it just you really like kind of like feel like the scenario going on of like Ugh. you're watching this happen to somebody Oh, boy. And, it's, and it's terrible and it's traumatizing. Um, but yeah, so I'm I, I got a real big kick out of that issue. I'm I'm really excited for this series. I think it's yeah. Eight issues. This one also says. Oh, does eight. it? Yeah, oh, that's cool. Eight so. issues. That's a, that's pretty bold. We haven't seen anything that bold since uh, eight billion genies. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see where this one goes. It's uh, I've said it before about awa but they awa comes in my lap every once in a while and when it does like i i'm always excited about it they put out yeah. some really good stuff but it is just like it's few and far in between and i don't pick up everything they put out either so mm. yeah it, it's always awa is always stuff that i grab when my comic shop's having a sale i was just going to mm. say that about uh the ribbon queen is definitely one that i'm going to be picking up when next time I, 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 I mean it's pretty early if it's only eight maybe i should jump on it should i jump on it uh i'm gonna say yes but i know that our our pal uh, uh is kyle's reading it kyle I yeah do. yeah if if kyle agrees that you should hop on it kyle did he spoke very highly of it so i yeah. think i might maybe i uh i'm i yeah why not eight you know what we'll see what happens that's we'll what, see that's what happens where, that's where we'll leave get that. on it um but yeah i'm really enjoying that but uh and i am just in this kind of kind of horror thriller kick at the moment of comics as well so that that's always a plus when you're like oh, in yeah. the genre so mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that at all um the last one that i want to uh shout out is one that i mentioned i believe last week feeder i yeah. mentioned that i i got back into it um is read issue number three this week uh this has like serious um a righteous thirst for vengeance vibes uh, mm. but it has here's what i'll say is that there's more i don't want to say depth but there's more ability to like there's more explaining of like the character's reasoning there's more kind of happening i think the beauty of uh righteous thirst for vengeance was the simplicity of it and like because it felt so grounded. This definitely feels like a heightened kind of sense of that world because it is kind of a similar story of like Hitman changes his mind, uh, you know, decides he's going to do this and uh, save a person instead, and then just dealing mm -hmm. with all the consequences of that. Plus, he's a heroin addict. So, uh, well, I guess I don't even, I didn't explain the story. I guess I did last week, but Feeder is about a, um, an old uh, comic book movie star who, uh, try to like make serious movies and they all flopped so then he just became like this junkie who's killed people for uh dope and uh <laughs> yeah so that's he was, quite the fall <laughs> it is quite the fall um so he got sent out to kill this like 16 year old girl who um stole like 53 bucks from somebody and they put out a hit on her and uh he it reminds him of his daughter that like he's not in his life anymore so uh -huh yeah so it's it's a lot of fun the art is like very solid um and but still kind of like it's like cartoons got hard like street hard it just like very kind of like soft writing but then like in the, or outlining rather and then in the middle like all the details are very soft but again that, i the art does look yeah the coloration reminds me a lot of a uh, old dog which is something i wanted to talk about last week but i i forgot to mention it um, oh, no. but, but just like how like different pages have a different color tone to it. Yeah. That's very, very much what this is because it jumps back and forth in time and stuff. So you see like a lot of, you know, color changes with that and, and yada, yada, but yeah, it's just been one that I've just been, it's just, you know, been consecutive, consecutively good. So check it out. Checking it out. 
Um, I don't get enough Sumerian in my life. I haven't mm. picked up anything from them in a while. And it's rare to see my shop bring something in that I didn't ask for from them. So, I mean, I don't see a lot from them either. I don't feel like they put out a ton of stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean that I, I try to, I do like them as a publisher. They did that rock and roll hell, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 yeah I remember when you got that. Is that the one that came with the tape? Yep. It's the, yeah. the, it's on the, the comic About is right on my wall <laughs> and the, I still have the tapes in right over there. Right on. Yep. Um, well, yeah, I got, I got one more. I want to mention just cause it wrapped up, Sick. but, uh, I was able to finish the final issue of Eternus. I believe it's the final issue anyway. Oh, wow. Um, and it That's... was, it was, it was a really interesting twist and clash of ancient religion. I go, you can spoil it for me. Cause I'll probably never, uh, yeah. If you so, don't want to know, goodbye. We'll see you later. But uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know how historically accurate this is, but it turns out that uh, Zeus is Jesus. Okay. I think yeah. I thought that's <laughs> where that was going or somebody, I think I might've saw that or something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it, it was kind of like alluding to it throughout the series. And, um, and basically it's like, Zeus gets revived by his children. Uh, his brother Poseidon is trying to take over as like, you know, the new Zeus. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but like it had been meant, it had been rumored that there is this new God walking around earth and nobody knew who it was. Not even, not even Jesus himself knew that he was Zeus at the time. At mm -hmm. least that's what it seemed like. Interesting. And then, you know, this big battle happens. Uh, Jesus gets sacrificed but he comes back to life, obviously, because that's that's what that's what he does. That's what he does. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it turns out that it was just like Zeus put into a new body and then all of his memories needed to be awakened. And hold on, let me was that you mean like sacrifices in the cruci like the original crucifixion or did he get sacrificed again? Uh, it was like it was a new take on the crucifixion, okay. I'll say like it, yeah. he was he was put on a, like a Roman altar and like stabbed with a spear. interesting. Um, and uh but yeah Poor it guy. was yeah it, <laughs> he's, it, getting the, he's getting like every every incarnation has just been really rough for the guy yeah but i, I just do. i really i really like the imagination that was put into this series um mm. and it, it came from the mind of andy circus i really like andy circus as an actor he's phenomenal as the you know most of the characters that we've seen him do we don't actually see him doing it because he was right. like Gollum, and then he was uh in planet of the apes as uh caesar but he does say one of my favorite words in all of the mcu oh yeah what's that cuttlefish <laughs> <laughs> with him just oh, I, I like to watch that scene every once in a while because i'm just like that's that's acting right there that's a man doing <laughs> acting did you ever did you ever I, I know i've mentioned this show to you before but did you ever watch venture brothers no Oh my gosh. Uh, the first time that Dr. Venture's nemesis uh, is in an episode. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember the whole scenario, but he has to shout, uh, bring me the cuttlefish. <laughs> 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 and he says in a very like, you know, villainous way, but he's also like, do I like, do I really have to <sighs> Gosh, okay. bring me the cuttlefish? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, Hey, do you want to ride this cuttlefish into town? Yeah. Is that the name of our horse this week is cuttlefish? Yeah. That would be yeah. a great name for a horse. Cuttlefish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah he's, he's, he's a cuddly he's fish. He's a good horse. Yeah. Cuttlefish. Yeah. We might stick. We might stick with cuttlefish for a while. We might cuttlefish. ride him on into the next town. And then the next town. He's yeah, like a, right. he's like a subway. Yeah. A bus. He just keeps on keeps he keeps on rolling, baby. Wow, <laughs> that's a that's two Limp Biscuit references. If I get a third, Fred Dears will come out of my closet. It's true. I've seen it happen before. <laughs> well, bring us home, uh, buddy. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for joining us. If you're with us today, uh, as always, you can find us on all the social medias uh, at the Pullbox Pals, and by all, I mainly mean the big ones. So TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Are we at Twitter? Is Twitter a thing anymore? I yeah. can't remember. Yeah. X. X. We're on X. 
Yeah. Every day uh, I wake up and I think I have poor notifications on my phone because <laughs> I just see a bunch of X and it's nothing that I care about. It's all push notifications that I just couldn't, I don't want to wiggle a stick at. Yeah. Um, and if you're, if you watched us then you probably watched us on YouTube, Facebook or Twitch, uh, please give us a like, uh, comment down in the comment section. We would love to converse with you. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, wherever you're listening to your podcasts, uh, please also just like, and give us a review and, uh, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, as I like to say, uh, what comic was it? The one that I said, Oh, uh, Crim Crimson Flower. I yeah. haven't read I haven't read comics like that one specifically in years, but overall I would like to say I haven't read comics like these in years. <laughs>